Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the press conference post-match, Team Australia. I have here the coach, Tony Gustafsson. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just kindly ask everyone to have your cell phones on a silence mode. Um, whoever wants to make a question, please raise your hand. Don't forget to say your name and the outlet that you work for, and the microphone will go to you. So let's get started. Right here. Cool. Um, Joe Lynch from ESPN. Tony, obviously an amazing night. Everything that unfolded really felt like the table was set when you get out. Ninth minute, Hayley Rosso scores. Game state completely gets flipped on its head. You're now top of the group. Just how important was it to get that early goal and ride the energy and ride the feeling, ride the emotion of the game to put yourself in that position? Um, I think obviously scoring first, there's a lot of stats out there about scoring first and the, the win probability when you score first. In that sense, it was important. But I never, ever doubted the, the players in terms of stepping out there today and perform well. We knew it was going to be tough, but the performance I knew was going to be solid. Uh, someone asked me how it felt about seeing the players play in the first half, and I said I knew it three days ago when we had those meetings and those talks and, and the commitment and the unity and, and how they unite in this performance. And yesterday I said, I think I said here in the press conference yesterday, a couple of players said we wish the game was that day. I knew they were ready. So even if we wouldn't have scored early, I actually think it would have been looking good anyway because they were so convinced and so ready to step out tonight. And just follow up on that, how did you feel when the ball, that ball hit the back of the net? Because you spoke about, you know, you're only as good as your last game and you knew how important this game was and the pressure that was on you. Just uh, what emotions are you feeling when you see the ball hit the back of the net and you think it's going to be all right? I'm almost always calm in the technical area. <laughs> uh, I have to apologise to the referee today. I think I was a bit intense at times. But now, obviously, I'm happy. I'm celebrating with it. But, but I'm also... It, it's, it's feeling proud and happy for the players and the girls. I know how much work they put in and, and how ready they were to play and, and when they score. And sometimes it also feels good when they score things that are straight from the training ground and you know how mu much time they put in to prep for things. Um, so, you know, happy for the players. And uh, But then also as a coach, you kind of straight away, you know, off, yeah, you celebrate a second or two, but then, okay, what's the next message? What's the next move? What's the ne next action? So you're always trying to be a step ahead as a coach as well and not get carried away too much emotionally. Uh, Tracy Holmes, ABC. Um, Tony, you often talk about in a room like this, uh, you know, the, the various opinions that are out there with regard to your performance. Were you really looking forward to coming in here tonight just so you could smile with us and share this incredible uh, turnaround, I guess, in fortunes? Can you tell us what, what it was that really flipped how this team performed tonight? And will Sam Kerr be playing in the next game? Thanks. Can I have another one? Uh, no, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I, I, I really want to be, be honest there. It, it's not about coming in here and trying to, to prove someone wrong or coming in and all of a sudden, you know, be, not at all. You, you're part of this legacy. Everyone in here is part of the legacy. It's much more than football. And it's definitely not about me proving anyone wrong. This is about the Matildas. This is about the team and about the fans out there. And, and tonight, I think, was more than the 90-minute football. Um, I think it represents so much more what the Matilda stand for and what they want to do in terms of inspiring, unite people and everything from connecting to, to former Matildas and alumni tonight with the Never Say Die attitude to the fans that, you know, backed them up and believed in the team, even though there was a lot of questions and, and maybe some criticism after the, the last game. Uh, but I was also, I think, pretty clear on what I thought about the performance against Nigeria, that it wasn't as bad as people want it to be when we lost. We did some some defending mistake that cost us badly and then the conversion rate wasn't good but there was part of our attacking game ordered against Nigeria that was very fluent and good and fast. We created a lot but today we converted as well. Um, so, so in that sense it, it feels good to celebrate together with all of you uh, a night like this uh, but then I'm going to be boring and say let's just do it tonight because tomorrow we start the prep again. Um, and when it comes to Sam what I can say, part of the reason why I also think that they were so united and performed the way they did is one of the words Sam said to the team is, uh, make sure you win without me so that I can get another week to, to train and recover uh, and get healthy. Um, and the team responded and said, yes, we will. You sit on the bench tonight and we'll win for you. And you could almost see that, you know, 
convi you know, com conviction and commitment from the players to let, let's do it, you know, so that Sam gets another week of training. And, and having that belief as well as a team with, in my opinion, the, the, the best striker in the world, uh, which I think Sam is, um, and still go out and play the fluent football we did and score four goals against Olympic champions, I think it's very impressive. Tony, um, just here to your right. Oh, sorry. Tarek from the New York Times. In the moment, you might not realise when you watch the video, you, just such a complete uh, performance over 90 minutes and um, calm in this context and environment. Given what happened in the two previous games, yes, they made a lot of chances against Nigeria, but they, didn't, they, they, were, they were under pressure. How do you explain that kind of serenity under these circumstances? Uh, I'm really happy that you identify that because that was one of the things we coaches spoke about afterwards uh, in the locker room about the solid 90-minute performance and the maturity of this team and how they've grown um, when it comes to tournament football and, and complete performances. Um, there's a strong belief and a clear identity in what we do. Um, and there's three main things, not to reveal too much, but I think you all know that. The number one thing is the pressing game. And I think the defending and the pressing game and the commitment to press uh, and win the ball to create transition moments was brilliant tonight. Um, and then it's our fluent, fast, uh, forward football, kind of in-your-face kind of attack and football. You saw overlaps, underlaps, given goals, combination play, a lot of outside backs flying forward, uh, like no hesitation to attack in numbers. Um, and then set place is the third one. We know we're one of the best teams in the world statistically on, on corners, both men's and women's, both club and country. We're actually one of the top teams in the world, uh, according to stats. So there's no coincidence that we score in a set play tonight again. And I just feel that that belief in, in the clear identity helps the team to stay composed. But the other thing I have to say is it's also the fans. I mean, look at the vibe and the energy tonight and the way everyone united and, and supported the team and believed in them, even though there's been some criticism outside and such, but the fans really connected and united with the team tonight, and that I think it helped to, to stay composed and believe all the way. Tony, Kieran Pender from The Guardian. Firstly, congratulations. Uh, Bev Priestman just said that these are the moments that define a team. Um, how do you take this momentum and take it to the round of 16, probably against Denmark or China, and then keep moving forward? You know, Is this the game that proves Australia can win the World Cup? I think we spoke about it a little bit yesterday. Someone asked about this being a, a crossroad moment or a defining moment for, for me, but more so maybe even the team. And, and we, we spoke about that as well. EVE was brilliant up here in the press conference last, uh, uh, last night and say, yes, we know it's a defining moment, uh, but this is, we don't shy away from a challenge. And I, I think this team have proved time after time with that never say die attitude that they can come in big when, when it's needed the most. And I think that says something about the team. And, and I've said it earlier, but I say it again. I, I hope a lot of coaches out there get to experience what I have experienced the last three days in terms of sometimes you just feel when things are going to go right. You just feel it's going to be a good game. You can't really touch it. You can't really explain why, but you just feel it. And I felt it already three days ago. And be part of this team for three days leading into this game, having that feeling, um, it's just been a privilege to be part of it. And that is all credit to the players and my support staff to create that feeling because they've been amazing in the prep work going into this game. Second part of that question in terms of moving forward, I think if you look at the last, since we played Canada last time, we have won 11 out of 13 games, included five against top ranked oppositions. We scored 33 goals, conceded eight. Um, if you look at the top teams we played, we beat Sweden 4 0 here before, Spain 3 2, England 2 0, France 1 0, and Canada 4 0. We know we might not have the best team on paper. We might not have the most top players in the top clubs in the top leagues, but we have something else that no one can take away from this team, and that's the identity and the DNA uh, and the belief that lives in it. And then being on home soil with the support as well from the fans, we have something unique, which means we know we can be anyone any given day when we come up with our A game. Tony, Vince Rigari, Sydney Morning Herald. Congratulations on a, on a fantastic win and... You know, that response after what must have been a difficult few days for you. Just on the, the team's identity, I'm, I'm curious. I think we all admire the never-say-die attitude of the Matildas. It's like their superpower. Why do you think it takes being backed against the wall to be able to produce their absolute best football, that high intensity? And does it matter at this point, considering that from now on, it is must-win all the way through? 
Yeah, just the fact that it is must win all the way through, I think, helps this team because it means the pressure will be on every single game. And we said our playoffs started tonight uh, and we're going to treat this game the same way as we treat upcoming playoff games. Um, so if we can have the same mindset moving forward, uh, it feels really good. Uh, but I hear what you're saying. I think it's an interesting question. And I think I need help from some some other people that have been part of the program for longer than I have in terms of the, the culture and, and all the never say die attitude how it's built over years. I do know it's a superpower, though, that I'm very proud of being a part of. But I also think that this team have, have proven in other um, games when maybe the game when they start it's not up against the wall it just needs to be a good performance uh, if you look at the England game or if you look at the Sweden game and then also if you look at the the GB game when we took ourselves to playoffs in, in the Olympics and such so I do think this moment when this team can play that high octane attack and fluent football even when they're not up against the wall if that makes sense. Tony Hoy, our Tim Mitchell from the Herald Sun up the back here. Um, Sorry, thank you. I was just going to ask you, with, with what was the plan all along with Sam Kerr? Did you, did you get to a certain point of the game where you were thought, we're so in control here that I can afford not to use her? Or was it always that you were just going to leave her on the bench tonight and let the other girls get the job done? I uh, want to be as honest as I can be here. Uh, at the same time, respect the integrity of, of Sam. Uh, you asked me yesterday who makes this decision, and it's the medical team and Sam that makes the decision. I was informed that she's available, but for limited minutes. And uh, we agreed together to say, if we can win us a week for her to not risk her to re-injure herself, we're going to try to protect her and try to win without her. That was always the aim. If we would have been in a situation where we would have needed her, uh, she was willing to, to take that risk and come on. But she was also very clear, let's not get to that point. Uh, and we didn't. I mean, I think we're all happy about that. So just to follow up, what point did you get confident enough that you thought, no, we're not going to have to um, call on that option tonight? I almost, I, I know this sounds maybe weird to say, but it was similar to the question about the early goal. It felt almost like even before the game that the players were so convinced to do it without her that we kind of said, let's just focus on that first and then we go to that option if need be. And then there was a plan together with her and uh, the Triple SM team, how she should warm up and what minute it could be an alternative. But she could sit on the bench the whole night today. But I also want to be clear, just because Sam wasn't on the park doesn't mean she wasn't in the team tonight the way she leads the team and what she gives to the team off the, the field as well, not just in the locker room or in the buses, but at the hotel, in the meal room, in the meetings. That is massive leadership. Tony, Nick Devine and Keep Up Australia, congratulations on the win. Just a two-parted question. First of all, Mary Fowler's response after coming back into the team and just to comment on her performance. And secondly, I know you've spoken a lot about having that belief and having a good feeling going into this night. Were you at all keeping an eye on what was going on in Brisbane just to, you know, sort of just have an ear to the ground as to what was going on in the Nigeria Island game? Yeah, um, I can honestly say what we do in tournament mode is we have a person live in the stands connected directly on the phone because we can't trust uh, that, you know, we can't lose one single second. Let's say something happens in the 94th minute and everything changes and we need to do a, a, a change. So, yes, we had live updates on that game, which we had in Olympics as well. We always have live updates on what happens on, on the other ground. Uh, we didn't need to, to use it because we were such in, in control ourselves, but we were ready to use it if need be. Um, and that's credit to all my, my scouting staff and the scouting team that's doing an amazing job throughout this tournament, is traveling around and, and be a, a Hawkeye for us in, in every single game on potential coming opposition as well. Um, when it comes to the second part, sorry, what was that again? I'm talking too much. Um, Mary Fowler, I said yesterday that it, she's been really, really good in training. She scored on everything. And this is, again, credit to my support staff and, and Mary. They had a very, very clear plan with the concussion protocol to do it medically right but then combine that with football content that could keep her in form um and when i saw her in training yesterday we all went like oh pff, if she gets a gets a chance she's going to score and but she was not just good on the ball today the defensive effort that she put in uh, she has matured so much in terms of both sides of the ball and and being a team player and do what's needed that's also why i used her as a center mid for a little bit because she won every second ball spin out of pressure strong in the duels so a very mature and solid performance from her tonight Hi, Cassie Hedesheimer with the Associated Press. You touched briefly on um, talking about the, the fans and the support. Can you elaborate a little more on, you know, as a coach and as, as for the players, what that home, uh, home 
crowd advantage does for the team and then maybe your hopes for, for that heading forward in the tournament? If you talk specifically doing a game, I think it's uh, the players express it as it, they they get fueled and get more energy. And because we sp play such a high octane game with a lot of running, there was a lot of running tonight in our pressing game, in our transition game, in our full attack, they feel that they get carried, uh, so they get fueled and a lot of energy during the games. But I think it, it's bigger than that because even between games, how they feel supported out on the streets, um, like they feel every single one, uh, even after the Nigeria game and the lost amount of encouragement and support that they feel in every day being on, on home soil and feel that belief and how they get supported is is just fantastic to be a part of and, and to see. So thank you so much to every single one out there that keeps believing and supporting this team. Because that's also part of their why. They want to unite and inspire and connect uh, more than football. Uh, and now we're starting to see big things happening, not just 90-minute football, but that, you know, the legacy that these players want to leave. Hi, Tony. Um, Anna Harrington, AAP. Uh, sort of a two-fold one. Partly you decided to revisit Caitlin Ford out wide with Steph Catley, and they combined so well. And just talk about whether we're going to use that what we'll see from that going forward. And also Kara Cooney-Cross, was this the, the tournament breakout game, I guess, for her? Left side, we felt um, we wanted a little bit more combination play on the left side. Uh, Caitlin and, and Steph have a unique relationship uh, and understanding when they play together. Uh, so does Caitlin and Sam when they play up top. Um, and Caitlin has been really good as a forward, especially when they pair up with Sam and that those combination play. We felt we wanted to invest in the left side combination today, but also because both Mary and EVE have been really good in, if we talk tactical term, false nines. Um, so we played a little bit different tonight, um, if you saw that tactically. But again, this team's identity is always going to be the same. But to be able to to play with, with two false nines today, um, or two tens, call it whatever you want, and then have speed on the wings uh, was a massive effect tactically uh, against Canada. So we got the best out of Steph and, and Caitlin tonight, but also two players in form uh, with Mary and, and EVE. Um, and then Kyra Kunikros, I think the investment that we have put into her over the years, um, the work that Hamabi have done with her in club, uh, the investment that she's done herself, uh, moving abroad and the maturity and grow up both as a player and as a person. I think you see every single game that she plays in this team that she gets better and better and better and better. Um, her decision making off the ball, uh, sorry, her, her decision making on the ball, uh, how strong she is in the duel. There were a couple of aerial duels, aerial, aerial duels tonight that she was very good at as well. So. Again, a very solid performance from her as well, which I think a lot of so-called inexperienced players show tonight. Let's look at Claire Hunt, for example. Did you take one step wrong tonight? Like, so the maturity of the team's performance tonight is one of the things that really, really impressed me. Let's go with our last question. Cool. Just, I wanted to maybe just building off the back of um, Anna's question, Tony, about Steph Catley. She's stepped up into a leadership role throughout the group stages and she's come home tonight, she's in Melbourne, she's playing in front of a packed out Amy Park, she's played an integral part in providing two goals and then you could see what the penalty meant to her in the dying stages and the big group hug afterwards. Just what, how important has Steph been to the side both on and off the field during these group stages through all the chaos? Um, I, I think if Steph and, and Sam have worked as a as a pair, when captain this team, you know, have a captain and a vice captain, and they complement each other. Do you say complement each other? Is that yeah? They complement each other uh, really good because they're very different, with unique skill set, both as players and persons. So they bring out the best of each other as a team captain this team, and obviously with Sam absence off uh, on the field, she has taken a massive responsibility on the field and and really really carried the team. Uh, there's a couple of huddles tonight, if you saw, when Steph is just leading and you know communicating and directing and keeping the, the, the question here about staying composed. Is this one player that always stay composed and one person that always stay composed? It's Steph. You know she's so mature and humble, both feet on the ground, but she's also a winner. She loves to win and play good football and fight in spirit and she's mentally very, very strong. So I've said it before, it's a privilege to coach this team when you have a, a captain pair like that that leads the team. It's just being a small part of a unique group of players and 
Steph has been amazing. And I'm really happy for her to not just score one goal, but two goals and score here in Melbourne in front of friends and family as well. It's, you know, you get happy and proud as a, as a coach for the players when they get moments like that. So we are done with our press conference. Thank you so much, coach. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. And congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.